Hey, 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 everyone. Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd. Hope you are doing well. And I wanted to come on here and talk about, do a bit of a retrospective, an aesthetic reassessment of an album that dropped last year, a very good record, uh, came in the top 10 of my favorite records of that year, uh, came up very high on my favorite albums of the decade list when I did that. And that is Tyler, the creator's Igor. Since the day I put out my review of this record and, and gave my thoughts on it and celebrated it for its creativity, its concept, its songwriting, even its uh, aesthetics and recording, I have been inundated with bad fucking take after bad fucking take of people telling me the recording's terrible. How can you listen to this? You're a liar, Anthony. You're disingenuous. This recording is shit. If this were another artist, you would you would hate the way this record is recorded. Oh, look, Anthony reviewed a new album like the Childish Gambino record, and he didn't like the production. He didn't like the recording. Well, the production on Igor's bad. Why did you like it then? Why did you like it there? I'm sorry for for, you know, over-exaggerating there. Let's think about this. Is Igor a literal, actual, low-fidelity record? The answer is no, and I will go over why. There was a time in music recording technology where all we could get was a low-fidelity recording. Uh, go on YouTube and listen to recordings of wax cylinders, uh, whether it be people talking or whether it be a piece of music. Uh, listen even to, on YouTube, uh, an old Louis Armstrong 78, uh, where you'll have a lot of muffled vocals, uh, you, you won't get much resonance from the lowest notes on the pianos, uh, as well as the bass. And sure, a lot of those 78s still sound good if they're maintained well, and they certainly served their purpose for the time that they existed, uh, but still, it was not the best representation of what it would have been like to be in the studio listening to Louis Armstrong play with his band. But now, in 2020, we have the ability to bring this unprecedented level of clarity to the audience. But for as long as we have been seeing these advancements in recording technology in popular and underground music, there have been artists and producers who prefer to stay at least a little bit shrouded in the noise, in the distortion, in the muddiness. They saw the unfaithfulness with which you can represent a sound in a recording as an opportunity for artistic expression. The messiness, the noisiness, all of that becomes the statement. Now, look, I'm just explaining the ethos here. This is not a blanket justification for all lo-fi music or all music that is labeled as lo-fi or artists who call themselves lo-fi. There are legitimately lo-fi albums and pieces of music out there that just suck. Which brings me to listing some examples of albums that have been critically acclaimed are considered lo-fi, but maybe are not lo-fi in the literal sense, in that every single sound in the mix is a low-fidelity sound. Maybe what would be more accurate is to call these records a mixed-fidelity experience, where some of the sounds that you are hearing are unfaithful, some of the sounds you are hearing are distorted, or clipping, or dirty, or warped, or weird in some way to give the illusion to give the vibe of dirtiness, to give the uh, feeling of uh, filth or grit or grime. I'm thinking about records like The Microphones, The Glow 2, Neutral Milk Hotel, In the Aeroplane Over the Sea, Sebado 3, Ariel Pink, Pom Pom as well. Keep in mind, these albums I just listed are just the tip of the iceberg of decades and decades and decades of lo-fi or mixed-fi recordings as a concept artistically. In fact, every artist I just listed here has made recordings that are way more low fidelity than these, especially Ariel Pink. So again, though, the point of the albums I just listed to you is that, yeah, in a sense, they are lo-fi. Aesthetically, in a way, they are lo-fi, but they are not literally low fidelity. Time's New Viking, rip it off. This album, if you play it too loud, will, will literally tear your ears to fucking shreds because it is that harsh. It is that lo-fi. That is a lo-fi fucking recording, people. That is a lo-fi recording. Some of the sounds that you hear in some of the tracks on Igor are smudgy, a little dirty, 
uh, compressed to the point where they're just fat, fuzzy, or there's just a vague warmth to a lot of what you're hearing that makes it sound a little old, a little dusty. And some examples of that would be like uh, the added record static that Tyler throws into I Think, or the uh, a very fat and distorted bass on New Magic Wand, or the way some of the vocals are, are slightly, slightly, slightly buried in some of the mixes on the record. But keep in mind, all of this is a trick. If you come out listening to Igor thinking, wow, that was a really bad, noisy, messy, lo-fi recording, you have fallen for uh, the ruse. Because everything on Igor is actually methodically assembled, EQ'd, and layered. Just the intro to Earthquake alone uh, features these glistening pianos and uh, very sweet synthesizers, layered vocals too. And when the bass eventually hits, when the beat comes in, it is very deep and very resonant. This is not literally a low fidelity recording. Many frequencies are represented in the mix of this track, which also goes for every other track on this album. What I find silliest about these takes is that there is a long history of mixed fidelity going on in hip-hop music, like Mad Lib or Jay Dilla have routinely embraced lo-fi aesthetics in their beats. Earl, some rap songs, uh, also Bomb Squad, Dust Brothers. In fact, for as long as sampling has played a major role in hip-hop music, uh, you have had producers putting together beats of mixed fidelities, of, of mixed sound qualities. Some of the sounds worked into the beat uh, will be resonant, will be clear, others will be a little distorted or messy, or uh, uh, will just uh, sound a little thin because of what they had to do to manipulate it to clean the sound out so that it represented what they wanted it to represent in the beat. I mean, are we not currently living during an era where you can type into YouTube lo-fi hip-hop and there are dozens of live streaming channels uh, playing lo-fi hip-hop anime beats, by the way, uh, many of which are not actually lo-fi in the literal sense. Uh, many of them are just kind of dreamy, laid back, kind of compressed, fuzzy. Uh, we're not talking about super distorted, thin, harsh recordings here. So again, there is lo-fi in the literal sense, and there is lo-fi just for artistic and aesthetic purposes uh, when it comes to music. And Igor uh, very much falls into that category. It is not a literal lo-fi album. And I feel like to just uh, flippantly compare this to any bad recording you hear on another record is, um, uh, it's embarrassing. S stop doing it. Because if you think what you're hearing here is like the worst recorded or mixed album of all time, uh, you, you, um, it, you either need to sit these conversations out or just listen to uh, some of the stuff I've listed and just more things in general. And I think I will leave it at that. You're the best. Uh, over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel and give me your thoughts on everything that I have said in this video down in the comments. If you agree, disagree, let me know why. I'm sure you will let me know in some way, shape, or form. And I will see you in the next video. Anthony Fantano, Igor, Lo-Fi, forever.